Sadly, Mr. President, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement follows in the footsteps of these other disastrous free trade agreements that have forced American workers to compete against desperate and low-wage workers around the world. Mr. President, over and over again, and I have heard this so many times, support, and I heard it just on the floor this morning, supporters of Fast Track have told us that unfettered free trade will increase American jobs and wages and will be just a wonderful thing for the American economy. Sadly, however, these folks have been proven wrong and wrong and wrong time after time after time. I hear the same language and every time what they say just proves not to be true. Let me just mention to you some quotes from the supporters of NAFTA. This is what people were telling us about how great the free trade agreement, uh, the NAFTA free trade agreement would be. On September 19, 1993, President Bill Clinton said the following. He was, of course, President pushing NAFTA in the same way that President Obama is today pushing the TPP. This is what Clinton said, and I quote, I believe that NAFTA will create 200,000 American jobs in the first two years of its effect. I believe that NAFTA will create a million jobs in the first five years of its impact, end of quote. In 1993, it's not just liberals like Bill Clinton, here's the very conservative Heritage Foundation in 1993. This is what they said, and I quote, Virtually all economists agree that NAFTA will produce a net increase of U.S. jobs over the next decade, end of quote. 1993, the distinguished senator from Kentucky, our majority leader, Mitch McConnell, said that, and I quote, American firms will not move to Mexico just for lower wages, end of quote, Mitch McConnell. Well, is what President Clinton, is what the Heritage Foundation, is what Mitch McConnell said, did that turn out to be correct? Well, of course it did not. What happened was exactly the opposite of what they said. According to the well-respected economists at the Economic Policy Institute, NAFTA has led to the loss of more than 680,000 jobs. In 1993, the year before NAFTA was implemented, the United States had a trade surplus with Mexico of more than $1.6 billion. Last year, the trade deficit with Mexico was $53 billion. So all of the verbiage that we heard about NAFTA being so good for American workers turned out to be dead wrong. What about China? We were told, oh my God, the Chinese market was going to be open, billions of people. What an opportunity to create good-paying jobs in America. This is what the proponents of permanent normal trade relations with China had to say. President Clinton, again, in 1999, Bill Clinton, quote, in opening the economy of China, the agreement will create unprecedented opportunities for American farmers, workers, and companies to compete successfully in China's market. This is a hundred to nothing deal for America when it comes to the economic consequences, end quote. Conservative economists at the Cato Institute, 1999, this is what they said, the silliest argument against PNTR is that Chinese imports would overwhelm U.S. industry. In fact, American workers are far more productive than their Chinese counterparts. PNTR would create far more export opportunities for America than the Chinese, end of quote. Wow. Were they wrong? The Economic Policy Institute has estimated that PNTR with China has led to the net loss of over 2.7 million American jobs. Go to any department store in America. Walk in the door. Where are the products made? China, 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 Vietnam, other low-wage countries. In fact, it is harder and harder to buy a product not made in China. So all those people who told us what a great deal PNTR with China would be turned out to be wrong, dead wrong. In fact, our trade agreement with China has cost us almost three million jobs. Chamber of Commerce told us that we had to pass a free trade agreement with South Korea because it would create some 280,000 jobs in America. 280,000 jobs, a lot of jobs. Turns out, wrong again. In reality, Economic Policy Institute recently found that the Korean free trade agreement has led to the loss 
of some 75,000 jobs. And now, Mr. President, the Obama administration says, trust us. Forget what they said about NAFTA. Forget what they said about Korea. Forget what they said about China. This one is different. Really, really. Cross our fingers. Hope to die. This one is really, really different. And yes, it may be true that every corporation in America, corporations that have shut down factories in this country, moved to China, they're supporting this agreement. Yet it's true that Wall Street, whose greed and recklessness have almost destroyed the American economy, they're supporting this agreement. <clears throat> yes, it is true that the pharmaceutical industry, who charges us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, they're supporting this agreement. But not to worry. We should trust these guys. They really have the, they really are thinking of the American middle class and working families. Trust us. When they tell us a trade agreement will be good for working people, yes, we should really trust them. Meanwhile, every trade union in America, the vast majority of environmental groups in this country, they are saying, be careful about TPP. Vote no on fast track. Mr. President, here is the reality of the American economy. Mr. President, I was very disappointed that President Obama chose the headquarters of Nike to tout the so-called benefits of the TPP. Nike epitomizes why disastrous, unfettered free trade policies during the past four decades have failed American workers. Nike does not employ a single manufacturing worker who makes shoes in the United States of America. Not one worker. 100% of the shoes that are sold by Nike are made overseas in low-wage countries. When Nike was founded, and this is the transformation of the American economy, and it's not just Nike, but when Nike was founded in 1964, just 4% of U.S. footwear was imported. In other words, we manufactured the vast majority of the shoes and the sneakers that we wore. Today, nearly all of the shoes that are bought in the United States are manufactured overseas. Today, over 330,000 workers manufacture Nike's products in Vietnam, where the minimum wage is 56 cents an hour. And I hear President Obama and other proponents of TPP talking about a level playing field. We have to compete on a level playing field. Does anybody think competing against people, desperate people, who make 56 cents an hour is a level playing field, is fair to American workers? Of course, we want the poor people all over the world to see an increase in their standard of living. And we have got to play an important role in that. But you don't have to destroy the American middle class to help low-income workers around the world. In Vietnam, not only is the minimum wage 56 cents an hour, independent labor unions are banned, and people are thrown in jail for expressing their political beliefs. Is that the level playing field that President Obama and other proponents of unfettered free trade are talking about? Back in 1988, Phil Knight, Phil Knight is the founder and the owner of Nike. He said that Nike had become synonymous with slave wages forced overtime and arbitrary abuse. Phil Knight was right. In fact, factories in Vietnam where Nike shoes are manufactured have been cited by the Workers' Rights Consortium for excessive overtime, wage theft, and physical mistreatment of workers. Today, Mr. Knight is one of the wealthiest people on this planet, worth more than $22 billion. While Mr. Knight's net worth has more than tripled since 1999, the average Vietnamese worker who makes Nike shoes earns pennies an hour. And that is pretty much synonymous of what unfettered free trade is about. A handful of people like Phil Knight become multi, multi, multi billionaires, and poor people all over the world are exploited and paid pennies. But I think an most hour. of us now have caught on to the fact that the trade agreements pushed by corporate America, pushed by Wall Street, pushed by the pharmaceutical industry, are very, very good if you are the CEO of a major corporation, but they are a disaster if you are an American. Let us sit down and work on trade agreements that work for the American middle class, 
that work for our working people and not just for the CEOs of the largest corporations in this country. And with that, Mr. President, I would yield the floor, and I believe note the absence of a quorum.